is signing the finance bill into law. We did everything that could be done to have Ruto listen to us and avoid the confrontation over taxes. We positioned the authorities and institutions. We demonstrated. We prayed in the house of worship. We begged to be heard. We sought amendments and we pleaded with our members of parliament to stand up for us. Our petitions were thrown to the dustbin by Ruto's tyrannical hands. He slided our pleas and violently dispatched our petitioners. Effective next week, therefore, fuel taxes rise from 8% to 16%. We will pay housing tax whether we need a house or not. The cost of basic goods which has been weighing Kenya down is going up from next week again. At a time like this, silence will be a betrayal to the country. Silence will be treason. We cannot be a nation of people who, having eyes, refuse to see, and having ears, refuse to hear. We have suffered a cruel betrayal of our trust and confidence in the ability of our representatives to protect us. We must punish the traitors and we must force a repeal of the Finance Act. But what happened this past week and yesterday is not just about the Finance Act. This is about the reemergence of a dictatorship and the leaders who cut their teeth and won their political schemes in an infamous school of dictatorship. We all know where Ruto, Mr. William Ruto is coming from. We all know where Mr. Chagua is coming from. In the run-up to the vote on the bill, more than 90% of Kenyans rejected it. Even after MPs voted in favor of the bill, polls continue to show that the majority of Kenyans did not like it. However, true to his character as a dictator, Ruto proceeded as if Kenyans had not spoken and imposed punitive taxes on us without our consent. That is contempt for the people. In a democracy, few individuals can use government as their tool against the people. The idea that only the wishes of Ruto and Gachagua matter in this country today must attract a very heavy price. Ruto is testing the limits of his illegitimate power. Ruto is testing whether we still have the will, energy, and resolve to fight remnants of dictatorship. After stealing our election last year, Ruto now thinks he can steal anything and get away with it. We have to stop Ruto and we have to stop it. We have to do it now. We must tell Ruto in no uncertain terms that he has stolen enough for the owners to notice and he has no more room for stealing the wishes of the people. This gathering must provide a mistakenly response to Ruto and those who think like him that we are willing and ready to do whatever it takes to roll back dictatorship. This gathering must make it clear to Ruto and all those who are nostalgic about the dictatorship of the past that they will pay a heavy price for their unfortunate experiments. We have some bad news from Mr. Ruto. The betrayal in the city has seeped into every village in Kenya. It has united Kenya better than any government ever would. Where the betrayal has shattered our faith in government and parliament, 
It has strengthened our faith in ourselves and our power. Consequently, Ruth and all those who think like him are going to learn the painful way never to mess with the people's food, fuel, and freedom. Hello? Ruth and his ilk are going to learn the hard way that Kenyans are fed up but not helpless. In this time of desperation in the country, Ruth is selling illusions of hope to our people with the phantom proposals that are meant to line the pockets of these cronies. It is wrong. It is cruel. It is evil. The question we must ask ourselves is, can a leader mean well for the people than the people do for themselves? The answer is no. Kenyans must not trust that instead a smile that Ruto wears. It is betrayer's kiss. If Ruto meant well, he would have listened to the people. He did not. And now we must fight. Fellow Kenyans, fellow Kenyans, comrades, a regime that has so blatantly ignored and betrayed us does not deserve our delegated power. We are taking back our sovereign power. We are going to the trenches ourselves to fight for ourselves. This re regime does not deserve our obedience. We have no obligation to work for the success of a regime that has no interest in our success. We are the people. Sita sima mama ufu ya kitawala Sita sima mama ufu ya